Hi, this is Don from Benson Archery Warehouse and today we're just going to do a brief video on how to tie a D-loop. So a D-loop is something that almost all, all compounders will need to use and it's a very important part of your shooting setup and it's very important that you can be able to tie one or repair one on your own. So in front of us we've just got a, a shoot string with a knocking point already pre-attached on a lovely green target coloured bear anarchy. Some of the tools that you're going to need to do a D-loop is uh, quite simple, very sort of basic toolkit. You're going to need a pair of long needle nose pliers, a good size pair of grip pliers that you can use to get a bit of tension on your D-loop, as well as something like this. So we use a Viper D-loop pliers, okay? Besides that, you're going to need a nice length of D-loop material. Typically around 5 to 6 inches is enough, but we're going to use a little bit extra length today just to make things a bit easier to see with. You want a good sharp knife and a lighter. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do with your D-loop material is fluff up the end of it, just like that, and burn it off so it can form a nice big bolt. Blow the end of that, cool it off. So you're going to get a nice good size head and that'll stop the D-loop from pulling through itself. Okay. It doesn't really matter which side of the knocking point you start on, either above or below. I prefer to actually start from my left hand side and work over to my right. So see if I can adjust the zoom a little bit. Okay. I like to go underneath and over, and go over the top of that head space, back around underneath the shoot string, and then through. Just like that. Okay. I'm just doing it slow so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm going to pull it nice and tight, nice and firm and through just with my fingers and you'll see that burn off head there is going to hold it in place so it doesn't slip through. I'm going to use my D-loop pliers okay, and you'll see the head spacing is going to be large enough so that any arrows that clip on won't get pinched. <coughs> with our large pliers going to grip onto it. I'm just going to pull it nice and tight. okay. And you'll see when I start moving the actual D-loop, the string's going to rotate with it. And it's important to get it nice and tight because having that level of grip means if I need to adjust my peep rotation, the D-loop is going to turn the string so the peep turns with it. Moving across onto the other side of the knocking point now, I'm going to go in the opposite direction because I want the knots to be on both sides of the string. That way it pulls on it evenly and it won't cause unnecessary twist in one direction. So I'm going to go over the string, underneath, oh nope my mistake, I'm going to go under the string, over it so that it's now crossing on this side rather than the underside. Pull it nice and firm against the knocking point then I go over and under like so. So what that means is if I cut it here and burn it off, which I will do in a second, you'll see that the actual burn off head is on the opposite side yep. to the initial one. So just going to make that nice and close. Going to use my large pliers again and pull it nice and tight. Okay. So then with my nice sharp Stanley knife, I'm going to cut about five mil space. That way it gives me a bit of room and I can fluff up the end of that and then I'm going to carefully burn that off. I'm going to press that down so it's going to form a good sized head on that and once again that'll stop it from pulling through. 
Now with my needle noise pliers, I'm going to just feed that through. Okay. And then I'm going to press it forwards to yeah. so just stretch out that loop. So it's got a bit of space yeah, underneath it. And that way I can actually get my D loop pliers underneath that loop. Like so. I'm going to turn it. Oh, it's probably not big enough. So I'm just going to give that another good push. Just crush it. Right, okay. Like so. So with the D loop pliers, they actually open up a space rather than clamping down on something. I'm going to get in, I'm going to turn that over, and then I'm going to give it a good crank. So it pulls it nice and tight and stretches it out. And there you go, yep. D loop is complete. So remembering that your burn offs are going to be on the opposite sides of each other, so they'll pull on the string yep. evenly, and it's tight enough that when you turn the D loop, the string rotates with it. So that's how you do a D loop. It's not that difficult, bit of practice, and you'll be able to get it under control. And uh, with a foot length of D loop material, you should be able to get at least two out of it. So, thanks for watching, and uh, happy practice.